One Chicago park has its own tiny zoo. Another has an art gallery with works by Grant Wood and Mary Cassatt. And still another features a man-made prairie river. These are just a few of the Park District treasures that Jeffrey Bear discovered in this edition of our series, Hidden Chicago. Garfield Park Conservatory is one of the great treasures of the Chicago Park District. But the people who built it, starting in 1906, had a real challenge on their hands, especially because the mastermind behind it was the demanding Danish-born landscape architect Jens Jensen, father of the so-called prairie style of landscape design. The outside of the structure was meant to emulate the shape of a Midwestern haystack. He designed this to be the largest conservatory under one glass structure in the world. In the famous fern room, Jensen called for native plants to be embedded in natural-looking limestone outcroppings, complete with a waterfall. But building a waterfall that looked and sounded natural was no easy task. In fact, Jensen just about drove his stonemason crazy. Each day, workers would stack up the limestone and show it to Jensen. And then Jensen kept telling him, it's all wrong, it's all wrong, rip it out. So this happened several times. And finally, the man just threw up his arms and said, Mr. Jensen, I don't know what you want. And so Jensen said, do you know how to play the piano? And the man looked at him like he was nuts. And he said, no, I can't play the piano. And then the man said, well, I have a neighbor named Minna. She can play the piano. And he said, I want you to go and have her play Mendelssohn's Spring Song. And according to Jensen, the guy heard Mendelssohn's Spring Song and came rushing back to, to work the next day so that he could rebuild the waterfall so that the water would tinkle over the stones the way it should in prairie country. Jensen passed his love of Midwestern limestone to his protege, Alfred Caldwell, who built artificial outcroppings at another Chicago park, the lovingly restored Alfred Caldwell Lily Pool near Lincoln Park Zoo. But if you really love those limestone outcroppings, there's now a Chicago park where you can see the real thing. Well, sort of. In the crowded, historically blue-collar neighborhood of Bridgeport, one of Chicago's oldest limestone quarries has been converted into the city's newest park. It incorporated many elements of the old quarry. You can see the old quarry walls, um, a lot of the old boulders. Some of them you can actually look at and see the fossils. And that big hill that's in the park, that's something they, they, they sort of pushed all the debris there to make the hill? There was all of this construction debris that had been dumped here when it became a landfill, and things were moved around and re-sculpted. You yeah. can see the skyline and a lot of traffic and the expressways, and it, it's just unlike any other place that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Stearns Quarry Park is just one of many unexpected wonders in the Chicago park system. And if you're lucky enough to spend a day with Park District historian Julia Backrack, she just might lead you to all kinds of hidden gems. Like a gallery crammed with fine art in the field house at Ridge Park in the Southside Beverly neighborhood, including works by Grant Wood, Mary Cassatt, and Maxfield Parish. It's a tribute to artist John Vanderpool. He was a Beverly resident who taught at the Art Institute for more than 30 years. And the painting it all started with is down here. When Vanderpool died, his sister raised money to purchase his painting called The Buttermakers from a private club and started soliciting other artists to donate works for a gallery in his honor. Soon the collection was bursting at the seams. And it just became a, a tremendously popular kind of thing that um, people who respected him and cared about him and were inspired as students decided that they wanted to donate paintings. Mm -hmm. One donor gave a tiny sculpture of 1933 World's Fair sensation Sally Rand carved from an ivory cue ball. There's also a painting of one of the Everly sisters who ran Chicago's most notorious brothel. At Indian Boundary Park in the north side neighborhood of Rogers Park, Julia Backrack showed me a field house decorated in Native American themes. Now there's an irony to this tribute. 
because this park is named for a boundary line that Native Americans were forbidden to cross. It sits right on top of the Indian boundary line, established by treaty in 1816 to keep Native Americans miles away as white settlers moved in and began building Chicago. The most unusual thing about Indian Boundary Park is that it has its own tiny zoo. It's a leftover from the days when Chicago's parks were run by neighborhood park districts. One of the park commissioners donated a black bear, so then they needed to build a whole zoo for the bear. <laughs> Some local park districts built very impressive edifices. Here in Garfield Park, where we started our tour, this golden-domed building housed the West Park Commission's administrative offices. The beautiful bas-relief sculptures in the lobby glorify, among other things, the advantages of the automobile over horses and buggies, rather an odd tribute to place in a park. After all, designers like Jens Jensen wanted the parks to give city dwellers a place to escape the noisy streets. In Humboldt Park, Jensen transported visitors back in time to the days when Chicago was virgin prairie. So what do we have here? What, what is this? This is Jensen's Prairie River. So This is man-made? Completely man-made. He created landscape designs that were very much inspired by the natural Midwestern landscape. So at the time, most people really didn't like the prairie landscape at all. They thought it was like weeds. And very flat, and very boring, and he had great reverence for it. For those who didn't appreciate his prairie style, Jensen did put a formal rose garden in Humboldt Park, but he wasn't happy about it. Later on, when he was a little bit older, he called it the folly of his youth. Humboldt Park's prairie-style boathouse fits in with the prairie-style landscaping of the park. Jensen hired his friends, the architects Schmidt, Garden, and Martin, to design it. Some of the Chicago Park District's architectural treasures are more noteworthy for the groundbreaking work that went on inside them. To be sure, this is a handsome structure. It's in Sherman Park in the Southside Englewood neighborhood, and it was designed by the great Chicago architect Daniel Burnham. But what's really significant is the building's little-known history. This is one of the first field houses really ever built anywhere. At the turn of the century, as millions of immigrants were settling in Chicago and the tenement district was emerging, there was a thought that there really needed to be a new type of park. And so the idea was that you'd have a whole new type of building, very much inspired by the settlement houses. And here you had club rooms and auditoriums, branch libraries, a cafeteria, um, indoor gymnasiums. They also had classes, English lessons, vocational training. Doctors and nurses would come and do immunizations. President Teddy Roosevelt called these parks the most notable civic achievement in any American city. Even the murals were installed with a teaching purpose. Now today, we wouldn't interpret history the way they did in 1912 when these were done. For example? For example, one of the murals says the treachery of the Indians. It's kind of written across it, and that's the way the Native Americans that lived in this area before were portrayed. We certainly wouldn't want to portray Native Americans in that way today. A less serious controversy at Sherman Park concerned this little sculpture of the Fisher Boy. Apparently, the nuns working in the church across the street objected to the full frontal nudity, and the little sculpture was removed. The park district may have lost this work, but year by year, it continues to gain new ones. Like the statues of Dorothy and Toto and other Wizard of Oz figures in Oz Park on the north side, there by Chicago artist John Kearney. Wizard of Oz author Frank Baum lived in Chicago. Chicago artist Richard Hunt created these abstract eagle columns for Jonquil Park, also on the north side. And then there's this work by sculptor George Siegel, sitting all alone in Chicago's smallest public park. It's actually on the campus of the Illinois Institute of Technology, but IIT had to deed the little patch of ground under this statue to the park district. That's because the Ferguson Fund, which paid for the sculpture, only commissions works for public land.
So let's take a walk from one end of the park to the other. That's it. I'm tired. Mind if I sit down? For Chicago Tonight, I'm Jeffrey Bear. <laughs> oh, that Jeffrey. There's a free self-guided audio tour of Humboldt Park narrated by Park District historian Julia Backrack. It's available online. For information on how to download it, go to our website, wttw.com slash Chicago Tonight. I've only said it a thousand times. 